Today I have the privilege of showing you our new RCP, the version 2 of the RCP we have been uh, promoting and producing for the last two years. And uh, you see it right here. I think this is just so beautiful and it is so much a universal RCP that you won't dream about it. Everything is configurable, everything is flexible because of the OLED legends that you see sprinkled all over this interface. There's not a single button with a fixed label. It's all dynamic, shown with displays. Beautifully laid out, RGB backlights, even four-way buttons you'll find on this guy. Now, this is the traditional RCP with an RCP joystick, um, where you have uh, the iris joystick in a traditional form. It is limited like any other such joystick by the fact that it um, it sticks in a position. So when you if you if you want it to operate multiple cameras, then you have a problem. You change the camera and the joystick is out of sync with your camera. So to alleviate that problem, we have made a different uh, version. This is an option. So you can uh, upgrade to this one where you have a motorized fader. Aha, so it means that you can on this one change camera live in flight. So as you as you change camera with one of these buttons for instance you see the slider moves to the position of the iris of that camera so that's really cool and useful uh we'll show it in a different video but uh it's the same body and everything it's just that slider option that the fader option is uh what sets them apart and different so the rcp today is a truly universal broadcast controller and um, it started out as an RCP for Blackmagic design cameras. This is also how it's uh, set up today. So in, um, in this video, it would uh, shade a camera uh, by sending ancillary data on the SDI out on the backside here. Um, and uh, that's kind of where we go from. Uh, you, you won't see a uh, picture on a camera today. I'll just show you the interface. So let's dive right into it and, and see what we have. Okay, let's start in the bottom. So in the bottom, I have, of course, the iris joystick. And you see, as I move the joystick, you see uh, iris values are changing in this display. So, um, and I guess that's kind of more or less all there is to say uh, about this. Um, if you turn the ring here, you have uh, master black moving. So you can see the master black value here is uh, moved by the ring. And this is just one way you can actually adjust master black if you want. Um, also, the top of the joystick, I think, I probably set it up, yes. So you can see the top of the joystick will be like a latching um, a preview function. So it, it, it flips a relay. This button, on the other hand, is a toggle button. And if you were me, you could hear a relay flipping on the back side of the unit, uh, but you can't. So take my word for it. When this is lit up in uh, yellow, it means uh, we are shorting a GPI output that you put, um, you attach to your router system so you have a preview um, uh, the preview monitor reacts to it. We have those dynamic labels. Look at how awesome they are. So those um, three buttons here as associated with active panel. So now we disabled the panel. Uh, relative for the joystick, auto iris. They are nicely labeled by OLED, uh, the OLED uh, display sitting right there. And of course the preview button is also labeled in this way. Then we have a shift key. We have our system info connect. We have master black coming up here. This is a tally bar and there we have camera ID. So uh, we are currently at camera one. There is a dip switch on the backside of, of the unit. And if I turn that dip switch, uh, I, I set it up to camera two, three, four and so forth. And you'll see that in the display. Now, I actually brought something. This little button is connected to the uh, GPI input on the back. And when I press it, it works just like if this was connected to the um, GPI output of your video switcher. So you have tally information coming over to this nice tally bar. All right. Um, these two buttons, I, I just ran out of ideas. I'm not sure that it's really a good idea to put shutter speed and sensor gain right here, but I set it up so if you can press it, it's just cycling through. And there you go. This is also kind of the state of the thing. We are still setting this up for the final uh, configuration. Um, but it shows you some ideas and potential. So these buttons um, will probably do something else in the end. Now, this is a menu section, this whole section of buttons. And what I did was to protect uh, sending bars and reset to the camera. So actually, uh, it said in the displays that these two buttons will do so, but they don't if I press. So I need to go to my shift key. I have the shift key here. And if I press the shift key, you'll see that those buttons now become active. So they, they light up purple 
and now when I press, then I reset everything. So that's uh, a cool way you can use Unisketch to set up the RCP to do this. Those three buttons are a menu selector. So we have here, it says white, black, gamma black, sensor camera, and they affect everything going on north of these buttons, okay? So if we just go up here, we'll see what happens. Now I'm gonna press the middle button and you'll see a change in those displays right there. And the change is that now we are adjusting gamma on the upper encoders, still lift on the lower encoders. And now I'm pressing the third button and you see a change again. So now we have uh, sensor gain, shutter speed, white balance, detail on our hue saturation and contrast focus over here and uh, so on. Let's just uh, try this and, and change. You see shutter speed is changed here, white balance is changed, contrast, saturate, focus. Um, yeah, you can see that too, uh, details and so on. Okay, did you notice that all the encoders are color coded? So we have uh, a clear indication that this button is different from that one. These three buttons seems to belong together, namely because they are hue, contrast, and saturation, while these buttons uh, also belong together in some way, like shutter speed and white balance, and here it's detail. And this is coming, uh, uh, this is a really cool feature which makes it even, uh, uh, basically underlines that it's such a universal product, because uh, you will see other RCPs, they have either uh, blue caps on the encoders or they have a printing on the case itself. We don't do printing on the case. We want the controllers to be universal and they are only universal if you don't print a lot of stuff that, that locks them down to a particular way of being used. So you, you see that taken to the extreme on this RCP that not only have we no printing, we are also using colors and displays to make it a perfectly universal interface. So, um, uh, the, the way we, we then solve this is that we have put backlight behind the encoders. So when you are in, in the white-black scenario here, you can see white, uh, a red background color, you see a green and a blue background color when these knobs are adjusting red, green and blue, which is shown in the display up here. Really nice. Just uh, enjoy it for a moment as I change these uh, menus, you see those colors are changing. Fantastic. So what is this? This is utility buttons. And uh, you won't see what they do unless we hijack the display. Now, this is one of the features we haven't really programmed all the way to the end just yet. Now, when I press this button, or actually I can press the, um, I can also press the upper edge of the preview button. If I press the upper edge on this button, then you'll see that these displays are hijacked. So now I press the edge, you see the displays change and the layout doesn't really connect well with these buttons yet. That's what we still have to do. But the idea is, as I hijack the display, it will show what are these eight buttons up to. How are they configured? What happens when I press them so you can identify it? Um, what they have been set up to do right now is to uh, recall some settings. So you can see settings are changed as I recall these uh, uh, buttons here. Uh, and it's also kind of indicated with the uh, pink color that those five buttons do something special, different at least from those two amber colored buttons over there. Okay, finally we have the joystick. The, the joystick pad is there because um, you find that more and more people are using robotic cameras, also in a professional context, and uh, you may want that the RCP operator has access to move the joystick a little bit. Now, actually, what is pretty cool is that you could take any of these four-way buttons on the RCP and then make it a binary joystick. So if you press the, the right edge of, of the button, then it's going to move at a fixed speed to the right and, and so on. Now, the joystick pad is pressure sensitive. It's, it's a um, custom component we've made, and uh, it is not pressure sensitive like a really high-quality joystick, but it is pretty good for what it is and it will uh, allow you, if necessary, if possible or desirable, to actually control a PTC camera. So this is why it's there. But you could also map it to, uh, to other uh, speed-related adjustments that you want to do. Um, yeah, so that's the RCP. It's really exciting to see this product alive. We've been uh, dreaming about this for a long time now and wanting to give you such a cool upgrade. It even has more or less the same price as the previous version. And uh, it's just so much cooler. So um, I love it. And what I love really a lot is the fact that it is universal. It's going to work with a lot of new cameras in the future. Like we just announced uh, support for the Ari Amira. 
Uh, we also work on Sony Symbol uh, camera protocol. We have uh, support for Visca cameras uh, uh, almost to the extreme that's covered in different videos. And uh, we are coming up with LANC support so you can shade Canon and Sony cameras over LANC like an FS5 uh, or a C300 or C400 or whatever, 200, 500. There are so many differences. Um, all right, so all these things. We are really going heavy into camera control with the universal RCPs. Um, this one, uh, the one with the motorized slider, uh, the color fly, which you may have seen in a different video. So it's really exciting future what will happen with these. Oh, and by the way, if you put them next to each other, huh, they also snap magnetically to each other. Isn't that cool? Let's get this party started.